Hello everyone, uh, my name is Alessio Scalisi and I'm a senior technical officer working for Agriculture Victoria Research at the Tatura Smart Farm. Uh, today I will provide some updates on the PIPS3 project, advancing sustainable and technology-driven apple orchard production systems. So why is the research needed? Um, the Australian apple production uh, is yet to reach uh, its full potential. Um, variable crop, crop uh, load manage, management, biennial bearing and inconsistent fruit quality need to be uh, overcome. What we know is that crop load uh, affects uh, yield and fruit quality. Uh, light interception affects fruit quality and carbohydrate uh, availability in the tree and canopy and ge geometry and tree architecture can be managed to improve uh, the amount of intercepted light. Uh, we need work to determine and, and estimate these effects of crop load on uh, yield, return bloom, fruit quality and uh, maturity. And then also we need to uh, decipher chemical uh, signaling involved in the biennial bearing behavior. And also we need to start to use, test and validate uh, artificial intelligence uh, mobile platforms uh, to predict special distributions of flowers, uh, crop load, uh, tree geometry, fruit size and fruit color. We should get excited because uh, we will deliver uh, results on uh, crop load effects and suggest strategies to uh, mitigate uh, biennial bearing and improve the quality of fruit. Uh, so we are, what we are doing is evaluating the application and accuracy of uh, a mobile platform from Green Atlas, the cartographer, for predictions of flower cluster counts, fruit number, uh, crop load, tree geometry, uh, light interception, fruit size and color. Uh, we will advise on uh, potential uh, uses of uh, different row orientations or rootstocks uh, to achieve uh, optimal uh, light interception for you know, stable crop load and maximum fruit quality and to uh, improve orchard resilience to uh, climate change. So there are many advantages for stakeholders uh, from you know, economic sustainability and practical management advantages, such as uh, reducing tree variability across the orchard so that we can save uh, input resources like water or chemicals and also improve the labor management. Uh, also, we can predict uh, flower and fruit number, fruit size, tree size we'll, that can support you know, successful automation uh, of operations such as spraying, uh, thinning, pruning, irrigation, and robotic harvest. So there are three main key activities in uh, this project. Uh, first one is uh, investigate the effects of uh, fruit position and light exposure on fruit quality. Then we are uh, investigating the chem chemical signaling pathways and biennial bearing under different crop loads. And finally, we are testing and validating uh, the Green Atlas cartographer to estimate flower and fruit number, fruit size, and color, and light interception estimation. I'll provide a few snapshots of the latest updates on the research, uh, our results from the first year of trials. Uh, we uh, estimated the effects of fruit position and light exposure on uh, fruit quality. Um, on uh, Bravo apples in the Sundial Orchard of the Tatura Smart Farm. So this was last season. Um, and the significant effects in the table are shown in uh, uh, blue for the positive relationship so between uh, uh, the position in the canopy and the specific fruit quality parameter and in orange for the negative relationships and the white ones are the not significant relationships. So the, the position of, of the fruit in the canopy was uh, measured with a LIDAR um, and the coordinates of the fruit in X, Y, Z were determined uh, where uh, Z, Z is the uh, height of the fruit in the canopy, uh, Y is the distance of the fruit along the row and uh, X is the distance of the fruit across rows. So what we have seen here is that increasing distance across row uh, caused uh, retarded maturity, decreased uh, soluble solid concentration and light color in Bravo apples. Uh, we also saw that increasing distance along row uh, caused a retarded maturity, light color fruit, but no change in soluble solids concentration. Increasing the height in the canopy uh, caused higher exposure of uh, fruit to light higher uh, stomata conductance, higher firmness, starch concentration, but darker fruit. 
um, increasing light exposure did not cause higher sunburn, but reduced uh, fruit size, increased flesh firmness, and increased dark coloration. Then uh, the preliminary effects of uh, crop load on uh, chemicals and uh, metabolites, um, basically based on uh, uh, two different uh, projects, AP15013 and AP19003. Uh, so the projects were carried out on uh, rosy glow and nicotine trees for the first project and, uh, and on ruby pink, pink trees uh, for the second project that is still ongoing. And we uh, have observed that uh, there is a, a significant change in uh, some specific bud uh, flavonoids uh, in response to crop load. And uh, identified flavonoids are camphorol, uh, naringenin, hepicatechin, and erudictiol. Of course, these uh, preliminary results need to be confirmed over uh, next year and maybe the year after. So we are still collecting buds this season. And also we have seen that there are no, no particular effects on uh, the concentration of these metabolites in leaves. And we have seen that the nicotine buds were more affected by changes in crop load than uh, rosy glow buds. And maybe this is due to the higher susceptibility of rosy glow to biennial bearing. Um, so this season we are also trying to uh, detect metabolite changes in uh, seeds. We'll try to. Uh, because we think seeds may be involved in, the, in this uh, flavonoid uh, regulation. But also we will try to uh, determine a relationship between flavonoids and salicylic acid because salicylic acid has also been uh, kind of linked to uh, crop load um, uh, variability. So it's pretty exciting for uh, this year's uh, you know, experiments. Uh, concerning the Green Atlas cartography, we are very excited to. Um, so we have done Agvik and uh, Tetura. We have uh, done independent uh, scientific validation of different parameters that Green Atlas can uh, uh, predict and uh, display in uh, spatial maps. And these uh, crop parameters are flower cluster number, fruit number, uh, yield, canopy size, and light interception, fruit diameter, and fruit color. And we, uh, we basically uh, found very good ac accuracy for all these parameters in uh, in apples in uh, in uh, in the Bravo apples we have in uh, in the Sandal orchard uh, the Tatura Smart Farm but also in commercial orchards like uh, 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 Plunkett's ruby pink trees. Mm. We have seen that uh, uh, estimations of um, canopy size and like canopy area and canopy density uh, are very well uh, correlated with the uh, light intercepted by the trees. Uh, we can see in the top right corner of the slide that uh, uh, the relationship between predicted fruit diameter and, and observed fruit diameter was really good and so we had a very high accuracy and we can uh, basically um, display spatial maps of fruit diameter and you know fruit, diameter, fruit size variability uh, within the block. And then we have an experimental uh, feature that we are Green Atlas uh, already provides commercially, but we are still uh, in the process of validating it. Uh, uh, um, and this feature is uh, fruit clustering. So basically, um, Green Atlas uh, can predict the level, the degree of clustering of the trees, and this can help in the at the thinning stage to organize labor so that uh, you know we know if there are trees with that uh, have clusters with two or three or for uh, fruit on average, so they need to be probably the, uh, the focus of, of growers. Uh, while you know, low clustering, low degree uh, trees, they don't need uh, probably a lot of work in, term of, in terms of thinning. So having a special variability of uh, clustering is a really, really helpful tool. Uh, we will be in the process of validating it this season. The Tatura Smart Farm regularly hosts uh, field walks and site visitors to showcase experimental orchards and technology. Of course, um, uh, with COVID, things have changed a bit, but we are still very keen to host uh, field walks next season, hopefully after December. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please contact me or Ian Goodwin. I would like to uh, thank you for your attention and uh, acknowledge uh, Hort Innovation for funding uh, this PIPS3 uh, project uh, using the Apple and Pear Research and Development Levy and funds from the Australian government.
Thank you.